So open mic, I have two poems, only one of which has the actual word victory in it. But uh, I hope you will agree that they are both victorious. So number one, lackluster. What a great word, huh? But that's what it was. In the end, anyways, it was pretty lackluster. Passive. All those empty words and false intentions. No actions with which I could really reckon with. I asked him to love me, but he was a little too busy. So I asked him to show me but he clearly didn't feel he owed me. I asked him to touch me, but his calendar said, oh, I'm not free. <laughs> so in the end, I asked him to just text me. And unsurprisingly, he didn't. And so it vexed me. It vexed me that he couldn't even sense me. He couldn't fill the gap of my own human necessity. Couldn't take the time to just try and placate me with his words, his empty words. They just, they just kept me on a string as long as that great old wall. That's how long he killed me. And even in the last few breaths, he still couldn't face me. He said all the right words. Then he just went and gone and done faded. Not a, how are you, or what do we do? No, he just vacated. A ghost of Christmas past, a song that didn't last. And isn't that the saddest fact? That we can go so quick from white to black, that we can sing the lover's song so long, then wind up wondering where the fuck it all went wrong. Are we givers, the naive to play, a game where only statues stay? Because I hate to think that we're the losers, us tongue-tied lovers that get confused, us courageous beings out there in the arenas, braving our souls, dusting off our faces. Because I like to think that in the end, vulnerability wins. That my heart, though sore and tarried long, can uh, my heart, though sore and tired long, uh, can raise its faithful chin. For if we didn't open up our chests, would there not resentment and bitterness rest? Would not I rather live here knowing that I bared my soul than I kept on growing? And in the end, isn't that where the real victory lies? In being true to ourselves, despite the chance, or perhaps the high estimation, that this time your courage might take a lesson. But in the end, the ones who win are those who travel with open wings. So that was, uh, thank you very much. That was number one. And uh, number two is, uh, doesn't have the word victory in it, but I think of the two, it's my favorite and possibly even more victorious. So um, let's do it. You no longer consume me. I no longer eat your memories with both hands, ravenous to taste you just one last time. I no longer spend my time savoring and gorging, wolfing, gorging, nibbling and wolfing down of the smell of your neck, the taste of your tongue, the feel of your hair beneath my ever searching fingertips. I no longer gorge upon the memory of the space between your collarbones at my little old table for one. Instead, I'm on a diet abstinence of you, of us, of all we once were, of all we could have been, of all the hopes and dreams that fell to the floor so many moons ago already. Instead of eating you, I now eat myself. I build my day up 
on the words that tumble from my beautiful mind out onto the journal pages that lie in front of me. I chase my lunches down with my own hopes and dreams, savouring appetizers of gratitude, desserts brimming with pride, nightcaps of I am enough. Send me so soundly to sleep you would think I drunk the whole fucking bottle. I make my own meals these days. But someday, when the time is right, I'm going to open a restaurant and I'm going to show the whole world how good I taste. Thank you very much. Thanks. So nice. Wow. Thanks.